wonderful world of Disney. The Wahoo Bobcat. On the day the king of Wahoo Swamp came home, you could almost feel the hush that crept through every creek and backwater till there wasn't a sound or stirring anywhere. Of course, the gators were staying deep under to keep out of the noonday heat, but everything else had a better reason for lying low. If the king hadn't changed his ways, and right about now, he'd be hungry and on the prowl. <coughs> they called him the Wahoo Tiger. And in his prime, he was the biggest, toughest, meanest bobcat that ever ruled a swamp. He'd been gone almost seven years, driven out during the time of the big flood. But now, at last, come back to reclaim his kingdom. In the old days, he'd been hound trailed and hunted by every human big enough to tote a gun. But no man had ever outsmarted him, or dog either. Of course, that was in his prime. Now the tiger was 14 years old, and he was just beginning to find it out. His speed wasn't what it used to be. It was getting to be a chore just finding food, let alone catching it. Old age hadn't dulled the tiger's sense of smell, though. And right about now, he caught the scent of possum on the air. springs in those old legs were getting a mite rusty. He'd just have to look farther down on the swamp menu. When the tiger finally did find something, he'd sure reached the bottom of the bill of fare. A plain old yeller rat snake. This was a little better than nothing but not much. The tiger had caught himself a meal, all right, but now he wasn't going to get a chance to eat it. He'd laid down a mighty bold trail, and already trouble was dogging his tracks. The hound was an old enemy called Rattler. The man was Sam Baker. Caught off guard, the tiger didn't have much of a lead, but maybe with a little artful dodging, he could improve it. Tiger knew every inch of the swamp, and he sensed he was being driven into a double-barrel dilemma. 
caught in that open water, he was sure to get blasted. And if he remembered rightly, in that old shack, another shotgun was waiting. Now, the best way out of a squeeze is right through the middle. He'd have to take a chance and try a trick. The tiger figured to leave his scent on this fallen tree, then back off and bring the hound to a dead end. It didn't work out quite that way. Well, one thing, there was nothing wrong with the tiger's memory. He was looking at just about the best bobcat hunter in the business. Didn't make any difference, though. He had to have a place to hide right now. come back, the Wahoo Tiger. Fishing likely. Trail's cold. Come on, Dad. Now, maybe Sam Baker hadn't noticed it yet, but old Jed Morgan had changed with the passing years. He'd finally come to realize that taking life wasn't nearly as important as hanging on to it. Pretty close call, Cap. Time passed. Sam Baker, that dog of his, couldn't have got within a mile of you. I'd say you ain't surprised you used to be. Jed Morgan. Sure ain't lost your gumption, have you? Hmm. Appears to me, old timey, you look kind of peaked. How about it, cat? You hungry? Go on, it's yours. I got plenty more. Well, Jed never thought he'd see the day. The king of the swamp, down to taking handouts. Better keep on going, Cap. You ain't king around here no more. Well, now, that was a matter of opinion. The old king cat figured he'd had quite a royal day. Outsmarted a hound and a hunter, Come away with a banquet to boot. The tiger should have known. It always happens. Just when you settle down to enjoy your dinner, the neighbors drop in. Pretty unsociable neighbors, too. A herd of razorback hogs. Now, cats and hogs have a healthy respect for each other's fighting ability. But when they started saber rattling and making war talk, he knew he was in for a fight.
was the Razorbacks that broke off the hostilities. There was still plenty of tiger in the old bobcat yet. Shortly after supper, the dusk and drowsiness settled over the old cat. He slicked himself up a bit, ready for a good night's rest, while all around him the swamp critters started tuning up for their nightly serenade. swamp, dawn broke hot and humid. The tiger stirred himself awake. Since food finding was always a problem, he figured he'd get an early start. At this time of day, the best hunting was down along the waterways where the swamp critters came to drink. Tiger, this was one morning that almost ended before it began. A cottonmouth moccasin. <laughs> now the tiger was in deep trouble. This was the private pond of old Boomer. keeper to a bobcat was something Jed hadn't bargained for. But that's the way it seemed to be turning out. Cat, you sure ain't got the good sense I thought you had playing tag with the gator. Now, if you ain't gonna take my advice and get out of this swamp, you better start acting your age and well, you might live a little longer. Here. That's a keeper from messing around with Sam Baker's chicken. Now, if you get hungry, you come to me for a handout, you hear? Well, seemed there just was no way for the tiger to get an easy meal. Still, he figured that fish was his, and he meant to get it back, asking him politely, of course. But the skunk wasn't a bit polite about giving it to him. <laughs> cat perfume would mark the tiger wherever he went and make hunting just twice as hard. By evening, he was downright starved. He just had to take a chance. He remembered he'd found food here. Maybe he would again. In spite of his natural fear of man, he set out to do a little prospecting. There was no sign of the man, but from inside the shack there came a mighty inviting aroma. Now the tiger had never done any indoor hunting before, 
so he'd go a little light-footed till he saw what he was getting into. Well, he wasn't planning on leaving anyhow. Because right now his eyes found what his nose had told him was here. Now the mouse of the house figured he had squatter's rights here. But if that cat was moving in, then he was fixing to move out. like the cat was just a little short on the jump. So while he was figuring a way up, this looked like a mighty good time for the mouse to be figuring a way down. when the tiger was coming in on the beam to the bacon that Jed Morgan was heading for home. The only one that wasn't making any progress was the mouse. Inside, Jed was beginning to wonder, what in tarnation? Inside, the cat was looking for a new trail to the bacon. And the mouse? Well, he was finally making a happy departure. But it was going to be a sorry homecoming for Jed. Gee, what's going on here? Got me a pole cat for sure. the chance. Comes back here again, I'll give him a dusting. Long after dark, the air still hung heavy inside the shack. 
It was just barely livable on the veranda. But already Jed's grudge was beginning to slip a little. He knew every instinct must have told the cat to stay clear of humans. Why the tiger'd have to be nearly starved to do what he did. Yeah, well, the old fool's all that hungry. Of course, forgiveness can go only so far. Considering the tiger's aromatic state, Jed decided to let him do his eating out in the open, kind of far away and downwind. Jed had tended the house cleaning in the morning. It was still pretty fierce in there. His dreams would be a lot sweeter out here in the fresh air. Cat, I never thought you'd have the crust. <laughs> All right, eat good. Now, maybe it's a good thing the tiger finished up and moved out when he did. Napping. He never did pay too much attention to swamp gossip, but this time he would have been real interested to hear the news. There was a stranger in the swamp, a big burly bobcat called Lop Ear. He was moving into the Wahoo, looking for a new hunting territory. So far, he'd found everything to his liking. He was figuring to stay. Straggling along behind came the rest of the family group, his mate and their two kittens. The kittens liked it here, too. Of course, all they really wanted was just plenty of romping room for their favorite game, Leap Cat. looked like two of a kind, but that's where it stopped. One favored staying close to mother, and the other was more the explorer type. And right now, his kitten heart was set on high adventure. Like all youngsters, the kitten was long on curiosity and short on caution. Of course, he really didn't know what he was looking for, but he had a pretty good idea that this wasn't it. Time to head for home and mother. The shortcut was straight up. The 
Tiger just couldn't figure out where from and how come that kitten. And the kitten didn't wait to explain. But when Lop Ear strolled over to investigate the yowling, this was something the tiger could understand. In this kingdom, there was room for only one king. In the end, old Boomer played the unexpected role of peacemaker. It was a three-way standoff. Aside from that one day of destruction, Jed and the tiger always treated each other with mutual respect. Each kept his distance. So Jed was more than a mite surprised when one day the tiger made the first move toward a closer friendship. playing around like a house cat. Okay, you've had your fun. <laughs> Give me back my line. You got yourself all tangled up, eh? <laughs> hey, cut it out. You're chewing up my best line. you want. They weren't biting today. You gotta go somewhere else for your supper. Well, they make sure it ain't Sam Baker's. It was the right advice, but wasted on the wrong cat. That night, a real outlaw prowled the swamp. In human terms, at least, Lop Ear was a bad cat. He always did his hunting the easy way a dedicated killer of domestic livestock. And chickens were his specialty. Now, to 
barking of a dog didn't bother Lop Ear a bit. But the bite of a shotgun was something else. He didn't have much choice. And now, he didn't have much chance either. doubt in Sam's mind at all. He had just seen the king go down. You there, Jed? Hi, Sam. Jed, you'll never believe it. No? I finally got him. Oh, well, you did, huh? Got who? The old Wahoo Tiger. Stole one of my chickens last night. The Tiger? Sam, you... You got the Wahoo Tiger? Well, I didn't get him exactly. Alligator did. But I saw him go under. Bet you didn't even know he was back. You hear something? Hear what? That. Something around back. A squirrel, most likely. Well, I'll be. Guess I got the wrong cat. Sam, it wasn't the tiger been stealing your chickens. I've been keeping tabs on him. Then you did know he was back. Well, yes, I and did. How come he's hanging around this shack? Uh, Sam, I can explain that. Oh, Sam, listen to me, will you? Hold it a minute. Don't get so excited. Jed. Jed, you gone simple setting out vittles for that varmint? It's only because he ain't up to chasing rabbits anymore. He's getting old, Sam, real old. Yeah, I know, like you. That's it, ain't it, Jed? Old timers stick together. Well, you go right on looking after the varmints around here. Me, I'm going to look after my chickens. And I'm going to get that cat if it's the last thing I do. You'll never get him with that dumb hound of yours. That cat's too smart. He ain't too smart for Brother Harry's dogs, the best hounds in the state, and you know it. Sam Baker didn't waste any time. Just two days later, he made good his threat. <coughs> Sam knew every inch of the swamp. He soon gave Brother Harry's hounds something to work on. Hold it, right here. Cat sign, right here. Get him started, Harry. We'll see how smart that cat is. Boy, they've got it already. Picked it up right away. About a quarter of a mile away, the two kittens had planted themselves plumb center in the path of trouble. Mama's boy was already headed for home. And when you suddenly find yourself out on a limb with no place to go, it's no disgrace to back down. Now these two gadabouts had laid down a regular road map of kitten trails. The hounds picked up one and followed it right to the lookout tree. While they were trying to unravel the tangle, there was big game just a few hundred yards away. The tiger. He figured it was time to move out. 
Gabe, the leader, just happened to catch sight of the tiger's tail. The kittens just couldn't find Mama anywhere. So they decided to hole up and hide out. Turned out they'd found a box seat for the big chase. Let's get. Of course, the mother cat had been frantically searching for her lost kittens. And now, with that pack of hounds on the loose, she made the right decision. While they had the chance, she would take her kittens and leave the Wahoo Swamp forever. Meantime, the tiger was just kind of loafing along, well out in front of the pack. But the hounds weren't loafing, they were closing fast. The old bobcat wasn't worried, though. He hadn't even opened his bag of tricks. Come to think of it, though, might be a good time to try one right now. He'd lay a trail halfway up this tree, backtrack on it, and just walk away and leave it hanging there. It always worked before, and it would have worked again, except for two things, Gabe's sharp eye and a slow getaway. It's just call for trick number two. Wasn't the first time he'd sunk his tracks under six inches of swamp water. Uh-oh. That scared up heron was a dead giveaway. Sure enough, Gabe picked up the sign and traced it straight back to the tiger. something quick, something special. He'd bust right through that herd of Razorbacks and lose his scent in theirs. Tiger had a pretty good lead. But now the hounds gathered their senses and were off and running again. The old cat 
Pat had bought himself a little time, but it was fast running out. The Wahoo Tiger had just about reached the end of his last trail. So maybe it was a kindly fate that brought him to the one place where he could hope for help. Jed Morgan's favorite fishing spot. The hunting call of the pack. The cry of the cat told Jed his old friend was in deep trouble. But where was he? If he ever got caught in that cypress grove, he'd never come out alive. That you, cat? Well, at least he'd found him. Now what to do? Wait a minute. That island. There was an idea. If he could only make it work. Come on, cat. Come on. How about a fish? See this fish here? Like a nice fish? I'll leave it right here for you. You come and get it. Well, it was up to the tiger now. Would he trust the man? Or take his chances with the hound? It had to be this way. That's a good cat. Now. Take it easy. Hold your horses now. Just a second. The first part of Jed's plan was a little detour till the course was clear ahead. Still. Stay still. We better split up, Sam. Come on, come on. Here, here. Here, Come on, boy. Come on. Here. Tiger, now's the time. Take it easy. I'll leave it to Jed. You sure act if you were in a hurry to get out to that island. Yeah. <laughs> With your help, Cat, we'll sure outsmart that Sam fella. <laughs> to eat, rabbits, frogs, and maybe once in a while, I'll stop by and leave you some catfish, just for variety. Hey, cat. We may be getting old, but we still got it up here, huh? Cat. Be seeing you. The day wasn't quite over for Jed. Jed! It was back on the mainland. Sam Baker was looking for a little help, too. We lost a cat again. How about a ride to the other side? Sure, I'll take you across. The dogs took off that way. Harry went back for the truck.
So long, Sam. Yeah. Jed, out there on that island, I couldn't have saw what I thought I saw, could I? Saw what, Sam? Bobcat. Bobcat? Twice while we were rowing by, I could have swore I saw a bobcat on that island. On that island? How could a bobcat get out there? If he knew how to row a boat, I guess he could make it. Yes, Sam, it's him. Okay, that's what I thought. But he's such an old cat, Sam. It's all right with me, Jed, as long as he stays there. Well, I'll get him to promise he won't row back. Okay, <laughs> you do that. He'll stay there. I'll guarantee that. That's a mighty smart bobcat. Yes, sir, mighty smart. And so the old king had a new kingdom. Maybe not as big as the one he had before, but just big enough for the Wahoo Bobcat. And here he would live in peace to the end of his days.